you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Absolutely fantastic. They say it takes many, many years to master harmony. Your tour has waited a long time to come to the people. Have you mastered the performance? I, you know, I certainly have had had ample time to practice. So I, <laughs> I think that by the time we finally hit the stage, uh, there will be a lot of pent up uh, excitement to to get out there for sure. So, is there a few butterflies that are still in, in your tummy when you go out there and perform like that? Because I mean, I mean, my God, a live audience. I mean, I was blessed with one earlier this year, and it's like there's just something about being live. Yeah, it's it's my favorite thing. I mean, I, I remember when I was in high school, you know, junior high school, and I got my first role in a musical, and the, the the feeling of just going out and performing for people and feeling that energy. That's something that, as the music business, you know, is always changing between all different kinds of, of formats and all that live performance. There is nothing that can replicate it. And so, yeah, I, I get butterflies, but it's because I love it. I think when I stop getting them, it's time to, to pack up. What about the live streams? Because I mean, that to me was like the new age album sleeve where we, we could sit there and be so up close and personal and hear your stories as well as the music. Yeah, that was an interesting thing because it was obviously a way for, for me and my band to get out there and to be able to sing songs for people all over the world. There was a certain accessibility that was great about it, but then, you know, you don't hear clapping. You don't hear people, you know, uh, screaming and, and you can't joke around with them and, you know, you're talking to a lens. So it, 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 it served its purpose and it was great and I was happy to do it, but um, it's, it's not the same. I think one of the things that I'll never forget is the hollow sound that's created by a cheer with a mask on it. And, and it's, it's one of those things I never want to hear ever again. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of the, you know, it's the, it's the way of the world. And so we're, we're trying to do things as safely as possible. But the nice thing about being at these outdoor venues is that you get a chance to, uh, to breathe that fresh air and to, uh, you can, we can hear people, uh, laughing or, or screaming or, or heckling. You know, nothing worse than a heckle in, behind a mask, <laughs> truly. We want to let that heckle fly. <laughs> now, from one creative to another creative, how do you protect those vocals when you're outside like that? Because, I mean, you come to the South. We're in pollen weather right now. Yeah. You know, a lot of, you're, you're doing the nose spray. You're doing the, you know, drinking lots of water out there. Your, your, your guest star every night is the weather. Yep. And so, um, you know, it really depends on what it is. But you know, most of the time, in the summer months at least, you're getting like a certain amount of humidity, which can be kind of hot, but it's actually pretty good for the voice and for the hair. So uh, <laughs> it's not so bad. Man, what, what I love is that you're starting the tour off in Detroit. Inside my creative mind, my God, I mean, that is the soul of music, Detroit. It is. Yeah, we we just love, love, love playing uh, playing there. I mean, everywhere from the Fox Theater to Pine Knob to, you know, everywhere in between. We just, we just, just, um, have had an incredible, incredible time there, and we always work with incredible musicians when we're there. So, yeah, I can't get, can't wait to start there. We, we as fans of music have have been kind of spoiled because of the Beatles' Get Back. You know, we want to see something that you have done where you take a song from from out of thin air, and all of a sudden it becomes something. Are you are you thinking about doing anything like that? Like uh, just take when you say take it take a song out of thin air. Uh, what do you, what do you mean? In other words, when that song hits you, Josh. I mean, come I mean, you you could be walking yeah. through a mall and that song hits you and you're going, "Well, here we go." Yeah, well, I mean, that's always the goal with with music is to is, you know you don't know where it comes from. It's it's the muse, and just sometimes you just you find something and it's and it's great. And that's the thing about sometimes with great songs and and singing songs that have been classics for so many years as they continue to, to have relevance and you find fresh ways to do them so yeah we, uh, we we want to make the people that are there very happy but if there's anybody walking by the venue that has no intention of seeing the show we want them to stop in their tracks too yeah. <laughs> speaking of that when you guys do your sound checks you show up early and stuff like that do you when you walk out there onto that stage nobody's around to see what's going on except for like the crew and stuff like that but do you envision seeing josh on that stage even though that you are there but but you know you, you up there on that microphone do you do you envision what is going to happen well i think the cool thing about you know that time of the day when you have the show that night is that you're kind of getting to know the house you're going to be in, yep. you know, and you're just kind of getting to know the place that you're inviting people into your house. And so that's a time when, yeah, you're envisioning what the what the spirit of the place is and what the ambiance is going to be like, and you're obviously getting all of your bells and whistles, you know, tightened up to so that you know it's going to sound as good as it can. And um, and yeah, that's a, that's a good time to visualize. It's a good time to visualize how it's going to be. And then, you know, then the X factor is when people come in, just expect the unexpected and, and go, go go along for the ride. Joe Perry of Aerosmith says he goes in there and he tries to figure out where the echoes are because those echoes can knock you guys off balance. 
Well, um, you know, it's it's the nice thing about open air is that there's uh, there's not a lot of echo that hits back at you. The, <laughs> the sound is kind of going off into space, so it's, it's a lot more controlled when you're playing the open air venues because you're not dealing with the arena kind of cement and metal and all that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I've, I've got in-ear monitors. I've switched, switched to in-ear monitors because it gives me a lot more control. Mm-hmm. Depend, you know, depending on where I am, I can get the same sound every time. I've seen you perform. One, one of the things that listeners, if they've never seen you perform, you could be in the final row, and I feel like that you are singing directly to our row. How is it that you have mastered that art? You know, that's. I mean, it's nice of you to say. I mean, it's it's for those of us that have the bug, and I think that's a very theater thing. Like you always say, to sing to the back of the house. You know. It's, I've been in that row, and I know how important it is when the performer, you know, really is, is, is singing for everybody and making sure that the person that's all the way back in, in the darkness there um, is getting the same amount of inspiration and knows that we're with, we're with them, you know. And, um, and so, you know, when you go out there and you see all those smiling faces, you hopefully you can see some smiling faces out there. We haven't seen mouths in a very long time. But um, it's a uh, it's a it's a thrill and it's an honor to to be in this position. And so um, yeah, we're we're definitely singing just as much for the back row, if not more, from the front row. Because a lot of times the front row is a lot of crossed arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the front row sometimes is the, is the row that's the hardest to win over. It's <laughs> so true. <laughs> so the, one of the things I've learned over the past couple of years with this lockdown is I I I, I love hearing people's stories, and I know that you know that you being out there on the road, you get many different stories from people as well. It's, it's it's almost like the fan is is now the musician as well in the way that they're they're willing to share their stories. What what are you learning um, in your way of knowing the fan? Well, I mean that's the good part about social media is that you get such a direct response from people and what songs have meant to them in their lives. And um, sometimes you 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 hear interpretations of your songs that to you yeah. it didn't mean that, but to somebody else when you hear how how it resonated with them in their lives you you get ideas about your own work that you didn't even expect from your fans and and you get a lot of really good feedback about kind of where to go because you're going on this journey together and so you always want to surprise yourself you want to surprise them and that back and forth is everything to me because i always want to make music that that um doesn't just give them what they what they always just assume or, or, or even just want. I always want to give people, my fans, what they didn't know they wanted to, to introduce them to new things, to explore together. I think that's how you keep things fresh and nuanced. And so um, that connection is absolutely vital. Speaking of taking people out on a journey, if you weren't doing music, would you be a book author? Because you know how to tell a story. Uh, no, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I, I think that I, I'm in a business that has, just stories flying at me at all times. I mean, just some of the stuff you couldn't write. I mean, it's just, it's just an insane cast of characters being in this business for 20 <laughs> years. Um, no, if I wasn't in music, I'd probably go into veterinary work. I love animals. And I think I would probably just be singing to a, somebody's hamster. So what, what, what do you think is your totem animal? Mine is the elephant. What, what would yours be? Oh, elephant's a good one. I do love, I do love ele- elephants. Um, you know, I, uh, I, uh, maybe a koala. Oh, Really? Oh, only because yeah, well, of... I, it's the it's the animal I want to be. It's the animal I want to be. I feel like I'm I'm kind of a I'm I'm a nervous kind of overthinker, and I, I yearn to just hang off a branch and <laughs> you know just kind of <laughs> let that eucalyptus do do its work, baby. Oh, dude, you would love this studio then because it's sitting up in the trees in a forest. I mean, we we really are overlooking oh, a forest just, where the deer are all I the dang time. Treehouse. Oh, I have treehouse coffee table books. Like I just, I truly, I just want to, I just want to live, live in the trees. That's all I want. <laughs> Josh, you got to come back to the show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. You're very kind. Well, Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. Will you be brilliant today, sir? Oh, you as well, sir. Thank you so much.